How much are you able to control the Senate? Um, liberal senators have been known to be fairly independent-minded in the past um, and have, have defied the leader sure. on a number of different things. I don't anticipate substantial difficulties. As I said, uh, it's important to respect the institution. I always respect the institution. The Senate does useful work for Canadians. It looks at uh, legislation. It sometimes catches stuff that us guys miss in this House. So that's one of the reasons we respect it. But uh, we've also made it clear to the Senate leadership that we've got to get this out the door. Canadians, you know, we've got unemployment going through the roof. We've got bankruptcies rising. We've got, uh, we've got housing starts stalled. This economy is sinking like a stone and and uh, you know my party wants to be constructive and positive and I'll pass that message in no uncertain terms to the Senate we are as I've said cutting bureaucratic red tape and I should tell you the public service thus far has been enormously helpful in getting this done what we cannot now have we cannot have the opposition in Parliament replacing bureaucratic red tape with political red tape we all need to keep the pressure on the opposition to act. So ladies and gentlemen, send them a clear message, stop the political games, pass the estimates, and let the work begin on these projects as soon as possible. We passed the budget last week. Did anybody notice? We passed the budget. They have a budget because I voted to pass the budget. Um, we have done everything we can to get the money out the door quickly so that there will be literally no delay, repeat, no delay, from the Liberal Party of Canada in getting needed, needed no. stimulus to Canadians. No. No. Honourable Senators, this morning we begin our consideration of Bill C-10, an act to implement certain provisions of the budget tabled in Parliament on January 27, 2009, and referred to the uh, Senate uh, five days ago. I'm going to urge you today to deal with this bill right away. And I mean right away. I don't mean that you go on March break and come back after March break and deal with it. Canadians are entitled to better than that. We have Canadians, and I have <clears throat> about 2,000 now um, emails and letters from Canadians. I brought some of them. I'm going to refer to them. About employment insurance, about needing the extra five weeks that's in this bill. That can start now. That can start before members of, the, uh, of this committee go on March break. These are people who have lost their jobs in Canada, who are entitled, according to this bill, when it passes, to another five weeks, which is almost $2,000 for an unemployed person. So this is not an academic discussion I'm here to make with you today. This bill was, is, is, is provided for in the budget bill. The budget was delivered on January 27th. This bill was dealt with expeditiously in the House of Commons with the support of the Liberal opposition. The leader of the Liberal opposition has made it clear that this bill should pass quickly as it was handled in the House of Commons. You know, uh, I'm, I'm struck by how this government can only get its agenda through by tricks. I'm struck by how as recently as the first comment or so by this minister is fundamentally misleading and yet is the basis of one of the bases of his argument for this bill. For example, he says we have to get these EI provisions in right away because there's five weeks and that's going to help people now. No, it's not. It's going to help people in 45 weeks because it's tagged to the end. Senator, you ask about EI and, and, and I think it's very important for senators to, to have directly uh, accurate information about what the consequences of the bill are vis-a-vis -vis EI. And I'd ask uh, Yves Jolu to, to speak to that, if I may, Mr. Chair. So, Senator, you, you mentioned that uh, the EI five weeks would apply only at the end, after 45 weeks. I'd like to clarify that it would not be the case. It would apply to all claims that are active as of the day of the Budget Implementation Act receiving royal assent. In fact, it would apply to all these claims that would be active a couple of days prior to the bill receiving royal assent. So it would apply, it would benefit individuals who are unemployed probably now, depending on when exactly the bill receives royal assent. You talk about the five weeks that's being added on, but what about the people that aren't getting it to start with? Um, you know, 40% of Canadians 
uh, and this can vary on where you are geographically, but 40% of Canadians uh, are getting it. The vast majority of people that pay into it aren't getting it. And so, Senator, the figure of 40% or roughly 40% is often quoted, but it's misleading because it includes people who've never paid into the EI program. For example, people who have never worked and are starting to look for a job for the first time, who have not worked in the last year and therefore have not paid into the EI program have quit their job without just cause and therefore are ineligible for EI, or people who are self-employed and have never paid into the EI program and therefore are not eligible. The EI program is a program under which you have to pay to be eligible. So you don't let all these people fall through the cracks just because they, maybe they, they haven't put enough weeks in. They're going to suddenly suffer in this terrible economy. You say everything's urgent here to get this thing going. Well, yeah, there are people out there suffering, and you're giving excuses as to why you're not going to help people that are in desperate need. Well, Senator, what, what, uh, what the official is doing is giving you the facts about the way the system works. It is not a welfare system. It is an insurance system. Absolutely. Yes. It doesn't work for people that pay into no, it. No, but you know, you're a former mayor. You know the provincial systems with respect to social assistance and the municipal. So you know that. This is an employment insurance right. system, and the official has just given you the parameters of the system. Well, what system do you know that most people pay into and can't get anything? No, that's out not. Of? Excuse me, Senator. No, that's you, the you case. That's not. That's a case in Ontario. It's a case in the city I come from. Um, Senator, you just heard that that's not so. Tell it to the people out there that are suffering. Can I ask you about the infrastructure? Sorry, Mr. Shrew tells me he was going to complete his remarks. I'm sorry. All right. So if you want to hear the last part, Senator, the last part I was going to say is that those who did indeed pay EI, in fact, among those, uh, um, over 80% do get EI benefits. So the 40% figure includes many people who have never paid into the program and are obviously not eligible. But among those who have indeed paid benefits or premiums, over 80% qualify for benefits. So over 80%, and it varies by province and by period of time during the year, but it's well over 80%. And what about the amount of money you're paying them? 55% of average earnings over the previous 26 uh, weeks to a maximum 447. A lot of the, this is a big reduction for a lot of these people. Why wouldn't you have increased the, uh, the amount of allowance for those people who can get it? Again, again, these are policy decisions. So they, certainly what we heard, you know what we heard, Senator, I don't know, you weren't there, I was. What we heard was that it was more important to give people more time. That's it, largely because we have industries in Canada, like forestry and the auto sector, there are others, that are going through a substantial transformation. The workers in those industries, some of them, are going to have to retrain for other jobs and in other industries, and the more time they have available with, with employment insurance helping them, the better. So you're going to retrain these people as well? You're going to put more money into retraining? Yes, we are. It's in the budget. Time up now. Right, we'll see how it produces. I guess you're going to talk tough to me too, are you? I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm ready. <laughs> I was watching you earlier. I'm a little, a little trepidation as I approach well, you, uh, Minister. But anyway, I'll take my chances. I tell you, Don, these senators, these liberal senators, didn't even understand the bill. They thought that it didn't affect employment insurance if they got it passed more quickly. They didn't even understand that. You know, we've got thousands of people losing their jobs in Canada. If they get this bill passed this week, then they'll be able to start accessing the increased employment insurance benefits an extra five weeks. That's about $2,000 uh, maximum for in, in these situations. You know, I was just appalled at, at, at the, the nerve they had to say that they would delay this bill at a time of recession. Okay, but they would access it after April 1st because that's when the money, because no. the five weeks is tacked on to the employment no, insurance it, period. No, now. that's, that's exactly, exactly what isn't so. No, uh, I mean, the money, I, the money could flow before the end of this fiscal year? Yes, absolutely, just, that's the just point. In, just in employment insurance? Or yeah, and all? employment insurance, that's right, yeah. because that, that's a change that, could, that happens right away upon royal assent and it affects people now. You know, you were putting a little heat to them, but you, all re you really think you're going to win, and um, I guess you were having an interesting argument on employment insurance, but the rest of it you think you've got as well. well it's not an interesting argument, Dan, with, with, with respect. We have a, you know, lots of people losing their jobs, and their families are affected by it. This is serious, and, and I expect the Senate to act in a serious way. Mr. Ignati has said to his senators, they must act quickly, expeditiously, we want this money out. Some of these same senators that he told to do this are going on holidays next week. They're not going to their constituencies because they don't have constituencies in the Senate. So this is a leadership examination 
for Mr. Ignatieff, and we'll see whether he passes or fails. That bill can have royal assent this week. Senate hearings discovered that eligibility for EI benefits was backdated two weeks prior to royal assent of the budget. This morning, liberal senators unanimously agreed to vote immediate passage of this budget. That way, Canadians will be eligible for the help they need as early as the 1st of March. Will the Prime Minister instruct his Conservative senators do the same so that C-10 can get royal assent and Canadians in need of enhanced EI? I'm unclear why this is amusing, Mr. Speaker. Whether he can instruct, whether he can instruct, whether he can, whether he can instruct. I think that we've got the question the right Honourable Prime Minister may want to uh, answer. Even the leader of the opposition found the humor in that question. <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker, Conservative senators have not been the problem. The problem has been the Liberal Party and the Liberal leader. <laughs>